Hi everyone and in this video we are going to discuss about sequential circuit models, the universal sequential circuit model and also the Moore machine model and the Mealy machine models. Sequential circuits extend the ability of the combinational circuits to store and later retrieve the information which are binary information. The word sequential means the events are ordered in time. What do we mean by events? An event can be a transition which is from zero to one or one to zero in binary, right? These are called events. So this kind of time separation which we are talking about requires something called memory which can hold a state which is either zero or one. So the difference between the combinational circuits and the uh, the sequential circuit is mainly the memory and the basic unit of the sequential circuit is mainly uh, flip-flop we can use latches as well but uh, flip-flops are highly used uh, in modern days so why do we call it a flip-flop uh, the name to the flip-flop is because of its behavior that it is either flipped or flopped which means it's either in one state or another, which means it's either zero or one state, which is in binary, right? So uh, this is because it's also called as bistable multivibrator. Some people call it uh, because it has two states, two stable states. There is another state which is called as metastable state, which is neither zero or nor one. So we don't want that to happen. So as we see in this figure that's about uh, what are sequential circuits if you see in this figure that uh, you will see the combinational logic within the sequential circuit model a combinational logic can be anything which can be uh, logic gates and or not whatever or the decoders multiplexers it consists of this combinational logic and flip-flops or memory circuits right each flip-flop can hold one state either zero or one that's the basic idea now for this uh, entire system there are some system input variables which are called i0 i1 to so on up to i n right there are n input variables and there are n output variables o0 o1 and so on up to o n okay now there are two different stuff which we are calling uh, here which are new which are called excitation variables and the state variables okay so we have separated this combinational logic from these flip-flops which are memory circuits okay so now this flip-flop has some input to it which are called excitation variables why do we call these excitation variables the reason why they call this it's so beautiful that we if we understand that we will never forget it the way the reason why we call them excitation variables is a flip-flop can hold uh, one state right let's say it's a zero now flip-flop state is zero the reason why it holds that state is because there is a latch within okay a flip-flop consists of latch two latches right so the state is latched it will be looping and the state will be always zero if it is zero it is always zero until and unless another signal comes and disturbs it yes so now it will be it's like it's sleeping and it holds zero i am zero 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 whenever you ask uh, the flip-flop it says i'm zero that's all and now a signal has to come to excite it to another state okay so that's why it is called as an excitation variable it's not called an input variable it's an excitation variable which excites the state of the flip-flop to change right that is that's why it's called as excitation variable and these excitation variables are functions of both the input variable and the state variables now the state variables are called state variables uh, as you know that it's the state of the flip-flop itself and uh, the output of the system the entire sequential circuit model which this is a universal circuit model which applies to all the sequential circuits okay so now the output of the system uh, can be a function of both the input uh, of uh, system inputs and as well as the uh, state variables okay so depending on how this output is generated now this is the where the classification comes into picture depending on how the output is generated we have divided these into two types of sequential circuits sequential circuit models which are called as mealy machine model and moore machine model 
so remember that these are models okay it need not be any system can be either modeled as a melee model or it can be modeled as a more model it doesn't mean that a system can be only modeled in melee model or mm, more model the first one is the more machine model now here we have the input of the system we have the combinational transform which does the transform from the input uh, inputs and the state variables as to generate the excitation variables e okay and this is supplied to a memory where we are supplying to the clock to synchronize the clock the job of clock is to synchronize right so now the output here there is a combinational logic again after the state variables state variables are going to some combinational logic and finally we are uh, putting the output from the combinational logic right now the output is generated only from the state variable as you can see does it mean that it is independent of input it doesn't mean because it is indirectly is related to input so as long as there is no change in the states of the flip-flops or the state of the memory there is no change in the output okay so this is the summary of what Moore machine model is so by definition they say in Moore machine model the excitation variable is is a function of both input variables and state variables as you can see but the output is only dependent on the state variables right so that's about more machine model so we will have an example where we will see the uh, more state diagram okay this is how the state diagram of more machine model looks like let's say there are four states okay state a b c and d and as I told you unless and until there is a change in the state there is no change in the output so which means the output is associated with what it is asso associated with the state it is not directly associated with the input whatever the input is we don't care we just care about the state so here you see that the output of the state a is 1 the output of state B is 0 output of state C is 0 and output of state D is 1 okay so now depending on the input if the input is 0 from a let's say we are in the state a at the beginning so if the input is 0 we will be still in Z uh, in the state a itself and we are going to output 1 and if we are in state a and if the input is 1 then we are going from state A to state B and we will be outputting what 0 because the output of state B is 0 that I, I hope you got it okay so we will consider one uh, situation uh, a practical situation let's say we have uh, I'll just move it over here okay so we have um, a microwave oven okay and how do we model that microwave oven using this more, more state machine diagram right until and unless it's applicable to some practical application it's not of that use right so let's consider a microwave oven not too much functionality we will not have too much functionality in fact in real situation it's too complicated we know that but here we will consider a very simple case where um, let's say what what happens when we when there is uh, we switch on the microwave oven uh, will it start heating all of a sudden no it will be an idle state it, it's simply sitting over there right it takes the power and it's it just started doing nothing until and unless we push a button so that is a state called idle state which uh, when we start it it will be an idle state we call them as we call it as state a okay and what is the functionality what 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 is the output of that state it's just idle don't do anything okay so now it goes from state is uh, what happens we want to cook something we put it uh, inside the microwave oven and we uh, push a button so that uh, it heats up right so we on the on pushing the button uh, what happens it goes to another state which is where it is heating okay now during heating what happens is um, it also turns on the timer let's say it turns on the timer uh, so that it we know that for 30 seconds we have to cook it and okay so uh, after 30 seconds it should go to idle state like that okay 
So now during heating, what happens is um, uh, it uh, someone will come and open the door. Should it still be heating? No, it shouldn't. Someone uh, is going to put their hand inside. So it should stop heating. And uh, that is another state which is called as state C. S stop heating and pause the timer as well. And now they close the door and then it has to start once again, right? So from state B, as you see, uh, it has, um, it, it can go to state idle when there's a timeout, right? Now you can see that um, it's it's so intuitive, right? We, uh, we as human beings try to understand things in this way only. This is the Mealy machine model, as you can see in this figure. Same thing almost, there is a combinational transform and the output is the excitation variables are generated from both the input and the state variables. And we have a global synchronous clock to synchronize the uh, events that are happening and uh, the output is generated, the, ex the state variables are generated and the output is generated from not only the state variables, but also an input is, uh, there is another input to this combinational logic, which is coming from this input, okay? So output is not only related to, or it's not only a function of state variable, output is also a function of the input variables. That is the, that is the difference between a Mealy machine model and Moore machine model. Now, on the fact that it's just dependent on the state variables and input variables, uh, it doesn't ma make much sense, okay? Let's try to understand why Why on earth is it's dependent on both. What is the advantage of being having uh, output as a function of input as well, okay? We will see the state diagram of Mealy machine model. Yeah, this is how it looks like now. This is not the exact the same same system that we are that we are seeing from the previous system, but just we are uh, taking four states only. Don't think that this is exactly the same system as that of the previous one. If we convert, we can convert Mealy machine into a Moore machine and Moore machine into a Mealy machine. The conversion between the uh, machines machine models is possible. Okay, but this is not equivalent. Okay, don't think that this is equal and then just because uh, I have shown it uh, like that okay it has also state a b c and d now the output is not associated with the state that's why I haven't put a slash zero b slash zero like that okay output is dependent on input and as well as state so output is as you can see I have written a, a zero slash one one slash zero like that right why do we write like that? A zero is the input and one is the output, like that, okay? So, if we are in the state A and the input is zero, the output for input zero is one, and if we are in state A and the input is one, there is a transition from state A to state B, and for that input, which is one, the output is zero. Okay, you can see that there is a, difference um, between uh, the Mealy machine model and the Moore machine model in the state diagram as well. Now, we will take the same example as the previous case, which is um, microwave oven. But you see that from the previous figure, there is an, there was another state here, right? So what we have done is we have reduced the state. As you just look, glance over it, you see that there is a state reduced from more machine model to melee machine model now we start at this state itself now there is a state a and state b on start we will go to state a and uh, a state a doesn't mean that it's idle i have told you that uh, the output of the system does not depend on the state alone it, it also depends on the input so if the input is timeout it is idle okay by um, in fact in rea in reality it's idle itself but if the output is, the input is timeout also it is idle the timeout of what the timeout of the timer if the input is timeout it's idle if the input is if we put push the button for heating it will start heating 
okay and it will go to a state b because in that state there are other inputs possible okay so in state b by uh, by default the the state is heating okay the output is heating when when we push the button but when we go to state b if there is a if the, if we open the door and it stops heating at it but it still be in uh, state b because it was supposed to heat okay it, it is not supposed to go to idle state and now uh, it also poses a timer but again the door closes that's another input to state b and it continues heating until and unless it uh, sees the timer uh, which is timeout so once the timeout happens again uh, it switches to state a if there is a timeout it, the, it, it it comes to state a so that is how um, it looks like right we can also show it like from state b uh, it switches to time uh, if, if there is a timeout it switches to state a we can show like that as well i believe so you see that there is a uh, there is less number of states in here but it's quite a little complicated to understand and uh, do this minimization because the states are um, uh, the output is written on the transition not inside the state okay so that is the main difference between melee and uh, more machine models um, it depends on the system whether you are going to use more machine model or melee machine model remember each state is nothing but a storage um, requirement okay state a requires uh, a storage requirement state b requires a storage requirement which means additional flip-flop to reduce number of uh, states is reduced number of uh, flip-flops okay uh, or registers you can call <clears throat> but uh, but also it de depends on the complexity if the, the system is too complex they may we may go, uh, go for a more model and if it is um, in between we can just mix them both we can go for mixed approach we can go uh, for that so uh, finally the difference between melee and more machine models as we uh, saw that more is more intuitive than melee which is uh, it's more understandable and it's quite easy to implement uh, but the thing is melee is uh, faster than more mo machine model because melee machine model gives output uh, in the same clock cycle uh, but the more machine model outputs in the next clock cycle what do we mean by that that is because um, if you go back and uh, see the machine model itself in more machine model if you change the input uh, the memory has to switch right until and unless there is a switch in the memory the state of state has to change first and that will take one clock cycle and then the output changes. but it's not real uh, in case of melee where the input changes the it takes the previous input uh, previous state itself and uh, then it changes the output okay and melee has uh, fewer states compared to uh, more which is actually a better thing for storage and area okay so as i told you before conversion between melee and more machine models are always possible and mixed approach can also be used uh, mixed machine models of both me uh, melee and more can be used okay yeah that's all for now i'll see you in the next video Thanks a lot for watching and bye-bye.